Jesus Bible and Current Events from a Christian Perspective, Battling Spiritual Wickedness in High Places, One Podcast at a Time. This is the High Places Podcast. Hello everyone, this is Jim. Uh, We're finally going to cover something in this podcast that I've been trying to get to for a couple of weeks now, but other events have uh, superseded that. Um, so we'll get into that in a second, but, uh, how about this, uh, election stuff? I I mentioned before, this is going to be an entertaining two years coming up, two year uh, campaigns now. Um, so the big news this past week is Howard Schultz, uh, the guy who gives you your, uh, coffee every morning, um, talking about running for president, hired, uh, Obama's former PR guy, and uh, boy, it sure didn't take long for the DNC operatives in the activist industry to turn their guns on him. Uh, isn't it interesting? The liberals seem to just kind of eat their own, but he is getting uh, the full court press now and um, being vilified. Uh, it's it's funny to me because someone actually made the comment that him running was undemocratic, um, which... I wonder if people think about the things they say before they say them. So, uh, just to summarize, giving people more options than the oligarchs and the two biggest parties somehow undermines democracy. And people should only be given two choices, apparently. Um, And there was talk about the two-party system, which of course is nowhere in the Constitution, Uh, It's just something that the two biggest parties like to propagate. And, of course, if you uh, check your ballot uh, from 2016 or the ones coming up, you'll notice uh, candidates from all sorts of different parties uh, and some with no parties at all. Uh, So two-party system uh, doesn't exist and never has. Um, But uh, as we discussed last time, uh, narrative is more important than facts. And so we're... uh, we're seeing that. I hope uh, Howard Schultz does run. I don't think I agree with a single one of his positions, but um, if uh, if he can show people that there are more options out there, and uh, we kind of break out of this uh, uh, mentality we're in, where we uh, have to choose the lesser of two evils every time there's an election. Um, they'd be good if people came to the realization that they actually do have more choices uh, per the Constitution. So, yeah, so it'll be interesting to uh, see how that all plays out. But today I wanted to talk about uh, a story I read, it's probably a couple of weeks ago now, about this uh, lady, and I had never even heard of her um, before, which, uh, considering the story, I'm, I'm glad I can say that. Lauren Daigle. Um, Apparently, she's a Christian contemporary music artist. Um, uh, We won't get, well, we will get really deep into this whole idea of contemporary Christian music. But apparently, uh, this story anyway, talked about some radio show that she was on Because apparently she's going mainstream and she's getting mainstream attention, which seems to be the dream of uh, uh, a non-trivial percentage of the people that uh, do this contemporary Christian music stuff. And um, she uh, she was pressed on uh, whether she was uh, you know considers herself a Christian artist, and she wouldn't say yes. In fact, she said that's a label that you know other people put on you. Um, I guess when she was doing, you know, music and events at all these Christian venues, um, that was somebody else forcing her to go to put that label on her. Not sure. Um, but was very eager to, uh, to wrap herself in that mantle, um, when she was on the way up. But it just goes to show that, um, uh, a lot of the folks that do that sort of thing, their ambition has very little to do with 
Christianity and a lot more to do with what every world celebrity wants, which is fame and money and recognition and influence and all these worldly things. Uh, apparently, there was a hubbub with her not long ago when she was on the Ellen DeGeneres show and the issue of homosexuality came up. And uh, she uh, waffled on that, which uh, a lot of uh, quote-unquote Christians who are in the public eye do. And she all of a sudden got some sort of amnesia about what the Bible says about this. I'm trying to find the article um, that talked about this because, you know, um, there's so many things to talk about. Let's see. Um... Last week during an interview with iHeartRadio, Daigle was asked, given her recent appearance on the Ellen DeGeneres show, whether she believes homosexuality is a sin. Her response was, I can't honestly answer that. I have too many people that I love, and they are homosexuals. So let's stop there. So I would argue that if you love them, and if you believe what God says about homosexuality, then you would tell them that what they're doing is wrong. Just like if you had lots of friends, for example, who were heroin addicts. You wouldn't, you wouldn't say that being addicted to heroin is a good thing because you love people and you want to encourage them to do something that's dangerous for them. And um, so I don't know if this was convenient amnesia or if nobody uh, actually t ever told her at her church what the Bible says about this um, or if she uh, happened to skip over those parts of the Bible when she was reading her Bible. I'm assuming that she occasionally read her Bible. Um, but 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 11 or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. So that's pretty straightforward. And there's any number of other verses we could talk about as well. And so, obviously, this is not a good thing, because if you're not inheriting the kingdom of God, you're going to hell forever when you die. So, to say that um, you don't know what God says about sins, any sin, and your excuse for that is because you quote-unquote love people, uh, that is a complete misunderstanding of God and the Bible. I wonder how that line of thinking actually works with Jesus. I mean, if you love people, then you just tell them that their sins aren't really sins. Then why did Jesus die on a cross? All he would have had to do is go around telling people that their sins aren't really sins. Or if he wasn't sure of their sins uh, because he loves them, he wouldn't have had to go through the trouble of dying. Uh, but obviously, uh, there was a need for him to die for our sins. Here's the really sad part, because if you read verse 11 in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, it says, after it lists, after God lists all those things, he says, such were some of you, but you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. So these people who were doing these wicked things they had been saved out of those sins. And notice that effeminate and homosexuals are in there too. So these are people who used to be caught up in those sins. But God says through Paul, such were some of you, but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were cleaned up, you are made more like Jesus, you were justified through Jesus' sacrifice. Isn't that more loving than telling someone that their sins aren't really sins? only for them to find out when they die that their sins really are sins and that God really meant the things that he said. 
I mean, it's just wildly deceptive to tell someone that their sins aren't sins. Uh, it, it's just, yeah. So it's funny because she went on after that and said that she's not God and can't say one way or another. Well, I would like to think that someone who calls themselves a Christian is somewhat familiar with God's word um, because then they can say what God says about something. Instead, she said, people should just read the Bible and find out for themselves. Um, I hope she was talking to herself at the time. Um, but <laughs> So um, she probably knows what the Bible said. Uh, but uh, didn't want to say this in public because it would interfere with her career hopes. And this is not a uh, new phenomenon. She's just the latest in a long line of these contemporary Christian singers, artists, musicians, whatever you want to call them, uh, who do this. They get any sort of publicity and they try to shake off the Christian thing as quickly as they can because they know it's going to interfere with them becoming mainstream. And they're not going to get all the things they want. And so it shows you where the motivation is. Their treasures aren't in heaven. Their treasures are in this world, and they want the things of the world. There was a, a guy back in 2014... Let me try to find this. Um, yeah, he was <laughs> he was the uh, lead singer in a Christian heavy metal band. Oh, where to start with that one? Um, we'll skip over the obvious things. Christian heavy metal band. Okay, um, this guy was actually arrested and convicted of. Uh, trying to hire a hitman to murder his wife. And why did he want his wife murdered? Um, because he was cheating on her. <laughs> and so, of course, when you commit adultery, the first thing you want to do is have your spouse killed. Um, but it's interesting. It, he was the lead singer in this band called As I Lay Dying. Um, and so, Lambesis? his name so so you know once <laughs> once all this comes out the pretenses are, are off the more interesting part of this story believe it or not is that he said he was an atheist and he wasn't the only one in his band that was an atheist and but he said you know they didn't want to let on because they were making money off of this and they didn't want to they didn't want to stop making money. And you get to go to shows and you get to have, you know, thousands of people cheering you and um, it's great for your pride. And so you get to pretend you're a rock star uh, because being a celebrity is like really, really important in this, con in this country and in this culture. <clears throat> and so these guys, they start out like this, that, you know, they want to be rock stars, but how do you get a gig? How do you get famous? How do you get people paying attention to you? Well... If you grew up in church, whether you're saved or not, if you show any kind of musical ability whatsoever, the church will let you perform at their services. And so you don't, I, all you have to do is throw some Jesus lyrics in there and you can play any kind of music you want to play. And everybody will go, oh, isn't that wonderful? They're Christians. See, they mentioned Jesus. They're mentioning Jesus so that they can play at the church. What they want is, you know, crowds ogling them and cheering them, and they want to be on stage and be the center of attention. And they're hoping that it, it'll turn into something else, something bigger. It's just, it's, it's amazing, this guy's story. He went on to talk about uh, all these different Christian music festivals they'd go to, and they would run into fans who would want them to pray with them and all that, and they didn't. They didn't know even how to pray. And so they would tell the people that came up to them to pray, and then, you know, they'd say amen at the end. And I guess one time they were pressed to, you know, give their testimony. And I guess there was still one guy left in the band who was still a Christian, 
Um, and so they kind of, you know, passed it off to him to give a testimony. And then they all kind of joked about it afterward that, that there was only one guy left in the band who was a Christian, and he's the one that had to give his testimony, which makes me ask, why did the guy that is supposedly still a Christian going along with this forgery and this deception? And it, I mean, it's just amazing. The, there's really, the really interesting part about this let me see if I can find it here. Um, yeah, here we go. This is, yeah. Um, he said during his tenure with As I Lay Dying, he realized that a number of bands that professed to be Christians were faking their faith just as he was. We toured with, we toured with more Christian bands who actually aren't Christian than bands that are. Lambesis stated, in 12 years of touring with As I Lay Dying, I would say maybe one in 10 Christian bands we toured with were actually Christian bands. Uh, yeah, so um, this is why I'm not a fan of contemporary Christian music or anything where Christians, supposed Christians, Try to act like the world. You can go back to Spurgeon and the downgrade controversy when uh, churches in England were trying to mimic the world. They were trying to garner the favor of the world. Um, and so we see this same th sort of thing here. It's been going on for a while, unfortunately. The Christian church in America has become so incredibly worldly. It loves the things of the world. It loves the things of the world. It likes fame. It likes materialism. It likes attention. It likes pride. It wants to be liked by the world. Why do you have all these denominations that are embracing all these wicked things? And not just embracing them, but advocating them and lying about God, saying that God says these things are okay. Well, it's because they care more about what men say about them than they do about what God says. Because they want man's favor. They don't want God's favor. And it's funny because it just... Uh, you know, so, nothing new under the sun. But God warned us about this. 1 John chapter 2, verses 15 to 17. Love not the world neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Let me repeat that last part. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Going on, verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So all these people that are seeking after the world's fame, or people who aren't famous, who are just seeking after the things of the world, and calling themselves Christians, they're chasing after things that will be destroyed, that'll pass away. They don't last forever. And they're choosing those things over the things that do last forever. Um, we're, so, we're so addicted to the world's media in particular. And it has such an influence. This is why all this contemporary artist stuff, uh, the this label they put on, uh, supposedly Christian entertainers, is so dangerous because we're actually creating in our churches an appetite for the world's sights and sounds. Uh, the music in particular is, is something that really hooks people. And the thing is, you can hear this contemporary Christian music, and they have some Jesus lyrics, but people are attracted to the sound. Well, you can find those same sounds on the radio or on the internet or 
uh, or anywhere else. They're from the world that have nothing to do with Jesus. But if we've created an appetite for these sorts of sounds in the churches, and you have people calling themselves Christians who do this stuff, it makes these things look not so dangerous after all. But time and time again, you see this falling away. Who is it? There's a great quote. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, by Joseph Stalin. He said, If I could control the medium of the American motion picture, I would need nothing else in order to convert the entire world to communism. So Stalin knew the power of the media. Uh, he knew the influence it could have. And we have Christians who are utterly addicted to Hollywood, uh, to music, to video games. Boy, do we have an issue there. Uh, violent video games. And people get numb to sin uh, because they like it. And so uh, this is why we're supposed to flee temptation as Christians. Um, because uh, we're still in the flesh. And we don't, you know, we, we don't want to play around with this stuff. We don't want to get too close because the closer you are to the edge of the cliff, the easier it is to fall. I can't tell you the number of quote unquote youth pastors or former youth pastors I've talked to who are, who aren't youth pastors anymore. Uh, they got into drugs. They got into all this other worldly stuff because they were trying to be too close. They wanted to be cool and they wanted to be worldly. Because somehow they thought that acting like the world was going to appeal to kids. Well, it will appeal to unsaved kids. Uh, and, and so why do we want to use the things of the world to appeal to Christians or people who we'd like to become Christians? Why do we want to have them be comfortable with the world? They shouldn't be comfortable with the world at all. The world is evil. The system is controlled by Satan. Why do we want to have anybody in a church comfortable with the things of Satan. But it shows where people's hearts are. It shows where people's hearts are. And so when it comes down to it, as you see with uh, these famous people, and you can see with not so famous people, um, if they have a choice between God or the world, um, a lot of times they choose the world whether it's fame, attention, fortune, pride, or just entertainment. What they put in their eyes and ears. They prefer the world over God. And remember what Jesus said, Matthew chapter 10, verses 32 and 33. Whosoever shall confess me before men, him I will confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. And so we have opportunities every day to either confess Jesus before men or deny him. And it isn't always with our mouth. It's our behavior. What do we do? Do we run away from the evil things of this world or do we embrace them? Do we go along with people at work? Do we laugh at the same jokes? Do we, you know, go to the same places? Do we hang out with them in a bar after work? I mean, what do we, you know, are we, are we afraid to be distinct? Are we afraid to be different from the world? Right? Jesus said, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. But because you're not of the world, but because I've taken you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. We live in a culture where people don't like to be hated. In fact, they don't even like to be unfriended. <laughs> so the devil's got people conditioned to really, really, really not uh, want the world to not like Christians. And um, again, it's a separating the wheat from the chaff. But as more and more persecution comes to Christians, um, we're going to find out real quick who's the real Christian and who is not. Because the real Christian is not going to be surprised that the world hates them. They're not going to be surprised that they don't get certain jobs because they're a Christian, because they can't work in certain industries, because there are laws passed against them, 
because they're treated unfairly and unjustly. The real Christians are going to expect this, um, and they're going to turn to God for the strength to endure anyway. The fake Christians, um, they're not going to put up with that kind of heat. Uh, they're going to embrace the world and turn their back on God, and they're not going to confess Jesus before men. And sadly for them, uh, he's not going to confess them before his Father who's in heaven. And since Jesus is our only way to escape hell, um, it's pretty bad when Jesus won't stand up for us. So, um, lots of things to learn from all, from all these things. Be strong. Don't be surprised if the world hates you. Um, ask Jesus for the strength, because nobody's saying it's easy. Um, but the other thing we can do is not be so enticed by the world and not be so attached to the things of the world. And um, we really got to get over this attraction and this pride and this desire to be accepted by the world. And you know what? Keep your kids away from all this contemporary Christian what's-it stuff. Um, because, you know, these people that do this, they have fans, they have young people that are influenced by them. And so when young people see... Um, these so-called Christians embracing the world, um, they figure, hey, why not me too? This lead singer, this heavy metal band, he just, one of the reasons he said he cheated on his wife is because, hey, you know, marriage isn't a thing because God isn't a thing. So what he says isn't a thing. And so imagine that message getting through to someone in a Christian church, a young influential person in a Christian church, uh, or someone who's easily influenced, imagine that message coming to them from someone that they admire. Scary. Wolf in sheep's clothing. So don't get too close to the world. And there it is. Yeah. Anyway. Um, hey, we see that uh, lots of folks have been uh, downloading the podcast. Uh, be sure to tell all your friends somebody's telling somebody something. Uh, you can also contact us at podcast at jesusforsinners.com. That's podcast at jesusforsinners.com. And we will do this again real soon. God bless. Take care, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>